everybody welcome back i hope you're all doing fine and today is going good for you we're going to go ahead and start the 6.4 notes here uh, and jump right into it um, so here's the polar coordinate system you heard me referencing in the prior sections <clears throat> it's basically just uh you know instead of x and y what you have is you have um, a radius and an angle um, and uh, the angle is measured from the positive x-axis counterclockwise kind of like we had traditionally been doing I'm um, just make note here that um, if you have a negative radius, basically you just go in the opposite direction. Um, and essentially, you know, it's the same thing as taking that angle and adding 180 degrees to it. Or subtracting 180 degrees, depending if the, you know, angle is under 180 or over 180. If you are under 180 um, and you get a, neg uh, a negative radius, it's the same thing as adding 180 degrees to the angle. If your angle is under, or excuse me, over 180 degrees, so we go all the way around, let's say we're down here, then a negative radius is the same thing as subtracting 180 degrees from the angle. So that's essentially with a negative radius, you know, <clears throat> you would just go the angle measurement, and if it says negative R, then you would just go straight line opposite of the origin, okay? Uh, so you're going to see that here in a second. <clears throat> And that's going to be, uh, you know, the second one here. But let's go ahead and start off with A. So uh, I'm doing A here. Here I have a radius of 4. So uh, you may have not seen this graph before. It is kind of like your standard X, Y axis here. Um, but notice that we have circles here coming out from the origin. And generally, you know, the smallest one is considered a unit of 1. And the other ones are considered a unit of 2. So this first inner circle is 1. That next outer circle will be 2. And that will be a radius of 3. Radius of 4 so on and so forth. <clears throat> so that's how this graph works. Um, you could kind of do the same thing in a regular XY um, plane uh, on a piece of graph paper, but what you would have to do is get like a compass and, you know, standardize, you know, circles. You know, so you could just make, make a small circle, be radius one, and then, you know, try to roughly double that radius, <clears throat> draw another circle, and that would be a radius two, so on and so forth. But, you know, we're just going to go ahead and use this one that was given to us here. So here I have a radius of 4, uh, and I'm not going to try to put the radius of 4 yet. I just know that I'm going to go do 4 circles um, out. Um, what I need to do first is actually the angle. So I'm going to go pi over 3 from 0, and you know this is conveniently um, measured for me. Pi over 3 is 60 degrees, which should be before 90. Okay, past 45 degrees, so past the halfway point. Okay, <clears throat> and I am going 4 circles from the center. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, and you, you just put a point. Okay, um, now you could come up with equations for this. These are just points and equations, you know, this is how you would plot them. It'd be a real pain to do. Um, I suppose you plot them enough, you know what they would look like, but you get like, you know, uh, strange and weird things um, in terms of the graph. Uh, this does have a lot of real world applications. Uh, in fact, when, um, you know, companies are describing the um, sound pickup uh, characteristics of a microphone, actually, um, you know, you have like cardioid and you have, um, condenser mics, all that other stuff. Um, but there's like sensitivity patterns for how you were talking to the, the microphone. You know, is this a microphone I'm going to use in a room? Is it going to pick up everything, you know, and, uh, 360 degrees around it? Or do I only want it to, you know, pick up stuff directly in front of it? Cause I'm using it in a noisy environment. So everything to the left and to the right has to be quiet. But what you'll see, you know, for, you know, microphone, um, you know, I guess you could say pickup characteristics. They'll literally have like an X Y plane just like this, and they'll say, "Hey, this is how you know this is how the microphone is going to sense." And you know, they'll have like you know something that looks like that. And you know, it it, it is a polar graph. That's how they you know come up with it. They actually use that in the programming um, to pick that you know to pick that up in a pattern like that. So it'll you know it'll, it'll ignore stuff off to the side and should only pick up stuff like basically 180 degrees um, facing into the microphone. Um, but it does look something that represents a polar graph, which is something like that. And we could get something like this by literally plotting this, you know. So, you know, the equation would be like, I don't know, R cosine, something like that. And, um, you know, you plot all those points, you know, go the angle, put the point, go the angle, put the point, go the angle, put the point, and eventually it would make something looks like that. You know, you got all these elaborate things that could look like hearts, they could look like flowers with petals. Uh, pretty crazy stuff, but that's one real-world application for this, okay? Um, just just a quick example off my head that I could throw out there, because uh, microphones are, you know, kind of crazy in the whole studio setup. 
anyways, coming back to this, let's go ahead and do one with a negative radius. <clears throat> um, so again, we do the angle uh, first, 3 pi over 4 is pi over 4 uh, short of, um, you know, a, a, a full one, uh, a full pi. So 3 pi over 4 will put me right here, just, you know, 45 degrees short of 180. And we should be going out to 6, right? So we normally go out to 6 because it says 6. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. However, this is negative 6, so instead of going, in, you know, that direction away, we go exactly in the opposite direction. Um, so exactly in the opposite direction would actually be 7 pi over 4, or 315 degrees. So we would just go, uh, it's literally 180 degrees plus 135. And we would just go six in the opposite direction. So I'm going to go ahead and go one, two, three, four, five, six in the opposite direction on the 315 degrees angle. So that would be the point. You don't, you're not drawing a line. Okay, these are just points. <clears throat> They're telling you the radius of this point is negative six from three pi over four, which is whoop, the exact opposite direction. It's like the other side of that straight line. So not too terribly complicated. Okay. Um, here, um, negative 75 degrees, so you would just go negative 75 degrees, which would put me at 285, right? It would just be 360 minus 75, which is just 285 degrees, okay? So I'm at 285 degrees, and they say just go to a radius of 3, so I'm just going to go at 1, 2, 3, and that would be that point right there. And that would, be, that would be it. That would be those three points. This one would be A right here. Here's the point for B. Well, I guess this would be P, this would be Q, and then this one would be R. <clears throat> and that's essentially it. Okay. All right. <clears throat> this next one. If a point P has uh, the following coordinates, radius 3, angle pi over 3, find two more uh, polar coordinates for the point. Um, well, what we could do is we could go ahead and, so it needs to be equal to this. So, you know, if we were to go ahead and roughly plot this, <clears throat> pi over 3, um, that's going to be, um, 60 degrees again, and so it's a length 3. So, you know, we're past the 45 degree mark. Actually, no, this is not going to be, um, 60 degrees, excuse me. Um, no, it's, it's, it's 60, my bad. Yeah, so we're, we're out here, you know past the 45 degree mark at 60 degrees and we're at a radius three. So we're, we're roughly like right there. Um, so how could we get that point? Well, instead of going pi over three, what we could go is we could go an additional pi. And instead of having that be that positive radius, we could have the negative radius, which would take me right back over to that other point. So we want to have a negative radius. Okay. And instead of going from here to there, we're going to say, hey, let's take this angle all the way over there, but then use the negative radius so that would take us back straight across, okay? And that would literally just be pi over 3 plus pi, okay? And um, that would put me, that would put me at negative 3, and then that would just be 4 pi over 3, like so, okay? So that's one equivalent point right there. All right, and then we could also go with the positive radius but have a negative angle. <clears throat> um, so instead of, you know, going to this point clockwise, uh, counterclockwise, we would go clockwise. So that would be the negative angle there, and then we could just keep the positive radius. You could go negative angle to right here and then also have a negative radius. That would also be another valid one. So Let's, uh, let's just do the first one where we go all the way around and choose the positive radius. So we're, we just established that that's going to be a positive radius of 3. Okay. And we want to, you know, just go this angle, but just in the opposite direction. So that would be pi over 3, and we got to subtract the full rotation, which would be 2 pi. So that would be radius 3, and that's going to give me negative um, 5 pi over 6. Or excuse me, 3 when I do that. I was doing this six in my head when I wrote that. Okay. So that would be the same exact thing. So that would be negative five pi over three right there, radius of three. Okay. Now we could do pi over three and then go 
pi in the opposite direction, right? So I'm right here, but instead I go in the opposite direction, 180, which would be the negative angle, and that's going to give me negative 2 pi over 3. Okay, so from here to there would be negative 2 pi over 3, here to there. And then I would just need the negative radius, so negative 3, okay? So this is also another point. So there's three points right there. We could do negative 2 pi over 3 and then do the negative radius to take me back into quadrant 1, okay? I could do negative 5 pi over 3, which would take me all the way around and keep the positive radius that would keep me right there. I could do 4 pi over 3, which would take me right here. And then do the negative radius, which would take me across to that point, just like that. Okay, so all three of these are valid points. They only wanted two, but um, there's one. No, oh, there's an additional one, rather. So uh, we could kind of see, like, what we basically did here in order to do that. So uh, for the negative radius part, right, it's, you know, when our R was positive, what we did here is we did a negative R, then we took the angle, and then what we did is we just added pi to that, right? Um, and then this one over here, what we did is we, te uh, you know, we took the positive radius. And if you think about it, we could have also just added 2 pi. We didn't have to subtract 2 pi. Um, you know, so basically we could, you know, just keep getting the same thing over and over again. So for the positive radius, you could take the angle and you could just add, you know, 2 pi to that, right? Over and over again. Okay, so we took the radius. And we put a positive R instead of just R. And then we just added 2 pi into that. Um, so here, once we added uh, pi to the negative radius, we could have actually kept adding 2 pi n over and over again and kept getting the same thing. All right. So if we kind of fix this one up, we get negative R. And for the angle, we have theta plus theta plus you know, 2 pi n over and over again. We could just keep going in circles over and over again. And here we could factor out uh, a pi, and we get theta plus pi times 1 plus 2n, okay? That would give me the same thing over and over again, okay, for the original angle. Uh, this one over here, for the positive r, you know, we take our angle, and basically we could just keep adding 2 pi into it, keep going in the same circle. You could also go in the opposite direction, but, you know, it, it's the same thing. <clears throat> uh, and that's essentially how you could find every single um, polar coordinate for a point, you know, every increment of 360 degrees or every incre increment of 360 degrees offset by 180 degrees for the negative radius. Kind of a mouthful. Um, and that's exactly what those two formulas are right there. Um, so you could just do your initial angle, theta plus 2 pi n, okay, and negative r, theta plus pi times. 2n plus 1. Okay, so um, that are the basic formulas there. Um, kind of, you know, I guess you could just mindlessly use that. Honestly, am I going to have those memorized? Probably not. I'm probably going to do every single problem by, you know, just reconstructing it like that. Like that thought process that I did up there. So... I mean, this is just one more thing to commit to memory. If you know how angles work and, you know, how negative radiuses work, really don't need to memorize these formulas. You could just, you know, work with what you're given. Okay, so um, you saw that circle that we had in the beginning there, right? Right, this one. And uh, I did mention that we had, uh, you know, the xy coordinate plane there. So there's obviously a relationship between the xy plane and this polar coordinate plane. Well, in comes this slide. This basically tells you how you can go between one and the other. Um, so, uh, as to no surprise here, we know you know that sine is y over r, cosine x over r, tangent y over x, so on and so forth. So then we get the following relationships here: that x is r sine theta and y equals r cosine theta, just like from the vector section. Okay, and here uh, we actually get the relationship that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. Um, note this is the circle formula. Okay, hence, because, you know, if we rotate these things, we're kind of making circles. So, uh, we're going to use these three relationships here to basically go between polar and uh, rectangular, as the x, y coordinates are called. So, just regular x and y uh, coordinate system. 
It's either referred to as rectangular coordinates or Cartesian coordinates, either works. Um, so we're going to go between polar and rectangle and rectangle and polar. And so let's go ahead and see a couple examples here of that. Okay, so here we have a point, okay, given in polar coordinates, and they want us to convert this into rectangular. Go ahead and make sure I have the angle of my paper correctly and in view. Okay, all right, um, so here the radius is 3, right, and then there's my angle, uh, and it's simple saying, hey, x is equal to r cosine theta, and y is equal to r sine theta. You could actually mindlessly plug these angles in most of the time into your calculator with cosine and sine and get away with it. I like to draw the coordinate, uh, the, well, just the xy plane, and actually put the angle in here. So here I'm pi over 6 short, right, of a full pi. So that angle right in there is just pi over 6. And uh, pi over 6 is 30 degrees, and across from 30 degrees is the side of 1. The adjacent side would be negative root 3, okay, because we're in the negative x direction. Um, and then this would be just 2. This is a 30-60-90 triangle, typical 30-60-90 triangle. Uh, so cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's just going to be negative root 3 over 2 with a radius of 3. So for x, that's going to be 3 times negative root 3 over 2, right? That's the cosine ratio. And cleaning that up, x would be equal to um, negative 3 root 3 halves. Okay, and you do the same thing for y. y is going to be equal to, supposed to be a y. Uh, 3 times the sine ratio, which would be 1 over 2, which is going to be 3 halves. So the ordered pair is negative 3 root 3 halves, comma 3 halves. Um, and I suppose you could put that into a calculator and get it to two decimal places if you would like. Okay. Uh, this next one, 200 degrees, isn't going to form uh, a calculator that we're familiar with. We're just or excuse me, form a calculator. <clears throat> it's not going to form a right triangle that we're familiar with, and because of that, we will have to use a calculator. Brain is trying to get ahead of me here. Okay, pretty sure it's screaming the same thing that you guys are. It's like, shut up, stop talking, you're going too slow, just spit it out. All right, so let's just go ahead and do what Brain you guys want to do and go over this. So here, x is going to be equal to um, r cosine theta, and y is going to be equal to r sine theta. Okay, sketching this out, negative 200 degrees is going to be past 180, so we're, you know, by 20 degrees. So what we have here is we have this right triangle where that's 20 degrees, and that's not a right triangle that I'm familiar with. I just don't know how to handle that, so it's, you're just basically doing, you know, calculator work based off this. Um, and that would be 160 degrees right there. So what you're going to be doing in your calculator is you're either going to be doing cosine and sine of 20 degrees, you can, you can probably actually use negative 200 and it'll be okay. But you would do sine and cosine of 20 degrees and know that this is going to be positive there and that will be negative. Or you do sine and cosine from 160 degrees and it should take care of the sines for you. You could probably also do sine and cosine and negative 200 degrees and it'll take care of the sines for you. I don't know, personally, because there's so many different calculators out there and I don't know how they're programmed and if they're going to take care of the sines correctly for me. I always like, you know, using the reference triangle here. Okay. Anyways, plugging the stuff in, we get x is equal to 2 times, um, I just use cosine of 160 degrees. <clears throat> and if I do that, um, I end up getting negative 1.88. And you should get negative 1.88, um, you know, if you use the 20 degrees but assign the signs correctly, right? Because that's the negative x direction, so you should make that negative. Y, it's a positive Y direction. That's going to be 2 sine of 160 degrees. Again, I'm just choosing to do sine of 160 degrees. If you do that, it should take care of the, sign, uh, the actual plus and minus sign, you know, positive and negative correctly. And if you do 2 times sine of 160 degrees, you should get 0 0.68. So that leaves you the ordered pair negative 1.88, comma 0 0.68. Okay. That's the same exact thing as those polar coordinates. It will give you the same point. All right. <clears throat> so here's going back to what we had before. They want us to find the, uh, uh, you know, two polar coordinate pairs uh, for the points given. Okay. Okay. So two pol uh, polar coordinates given uh, for the points with given rectangular coordinates. So these are rectangular coordinates. Okay. Um, how do I know that? Well, there's no degree symbol and they, they tell me. Um, honestly, this could be one radian with a radius negative one. 
So how do I know that's not polar coordinates? They tell me they're rectangular coordinates. So this is like a regular XY pair. So make sure you see if you're given a rectangular coordinate or a polar coordinate. Because look here, these are both polars. One has degree and one does not. They put a pi in there, so that's kind of a dead giveaway. It's an angle. But technically for radians, okay, I don't have to put a degree symbol. So I could actually say, hey, I got this point here. And my point is um, 3 comma 4.2. And because we're now in a polar coordinate chapter, is that an XY ordered pair? So is that actually 3 for X and 4.2 for Y? Or is this radius 3? And is that 4.2 radians in terms of angle? You don't know, okay? You have to be very specific when you're giving the points now. So, you know, if you write 3, uh, you know, 3 comma 4.2, you got to tell me, hey, those, that's regular X and Ys, okay? Those are rectangular coordinates, okay? Because you write 3 comma 4.2, that could be a polar coordinate at this point in time. Anyways, they tell me these are rectangulars. So this is just, you know, your regular X and your Y. So this is, uh, you know, negative 1 here, positive 1 there. This is that point. This creates a right triangle, okay? Um, if I want to convert that into polar coordinates, um, you know, a, a side of length negative 1 here and a side of length 1 here, that's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. That would be root 2 there. That would be 45 degrees past 190, uh, which would be 135 degrees. I'm starting to say the sum there instead of you know, 90 degrees. Okay, uh, and that's going to be um, 3 pi over 4. Okay, so you could use the degree, you could use the radian, you know, whatever my lab wants, just use the correct one. Okay, so uh, that, yeah, we got everything we need. The radius is root 2, right? Because that would be the hypotenuse of that right triangle going left 1, up 1. Um, and we established that that's 135 degrees, 90, plus another 45 degrees, because, you know, you just have to recognize that this is a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. Okay. All right, so the polar coordinates for that would be uh, root 2, comma, 135 degrees, or root 2, comma, 3 pi over 4 radians. Either, either works for that point P. That's what it would be in polar right there. The P doesn't mean polar. They just call this point P. Okay, next one. <clears throat> We have the point negative three zero, so we're just right there on the negative x axis. That would be one hundred eighty degrees, or that would be pi, and um, you know degrees and radians. Uh, the radius is three because that's the length, right? It's just a flat line right there. It doesn't even form a right triangle. So here, radius is three. So your order, your polar coordinate pair would be three comma one hundred eighty degrees, or it'd be three comma pi radians. Either work for that one. That one's really straightforward. Okay, this next one, we have uh, a right triangle. We're over one and up four. Okay, so we got something that looks like that. This is not a triangle that we're aware of. Um, this hypotenuse would be 16 plus one in a square root, so that would be root 17. That's not a triangle that I'm familiar with. I'm going to have to use some, you know, basic geometry trick to figure that out. Um, so the radius is right there. It's root 17. It's just the hypotenuse. Um, so I'm just going to use the tangent ratio here. So tangent of whatever that angle is, this is going to be equal to 4 over 1. Taking tangent inverse of 4 over 1 gives me the angle. And that angle is approximately um, 75.96 degrees or 1.33 radians. Now this is where I was talking about. So, you know, when it's radians, whoops, that's got cut off there. My bad. Okay, so 75.96 degrees, or 1.33 radians. Um, now, like I was saying, if we write this in degrees, it's pretty clear they're polar coordinates, right? So I have root 17, and then 75.96 degrees. This is pretty clear that this is a polar coordinate system, radius, and then there's the angle with degrees. But if I were to keep this as radians, how do I know without context? That looks like an XY ordered pair, because 75.96 degrees is 1.33 radians. Okay, so um, how do you distinguish that? Ah, I, I guess you would put rads there or always keep it as degrees because if you don't add context to that, who knows what this is, you know? Um, I guess you could just write rads there for radians and that would probably clear things up in the shortest amount of writing possible. Okay. 
Uh, now, contextually, if all my work is done in polar coordinates, I would probably assume that's polar coordinates, but I think you would probably just have to write rads there because, you know, or keep everything in terms of pi. Um, but that would, you know, if I convert 75.96 degrees into radians with pi, it's not going to be very pretty. So it is what it is, I suppose. Okay. All right. So here they want us to convert uh, these equations into rectangular, a.k.a. they want me to bring back x and y. So um, you got to recall a couple of things here. Um, I'll write that off to the side over here. I don't know why I'm favoring so far to the, uh, the right. I'll try to stop doing that. So here, remember, x equal to r cosine theta, and y is equal to r sine of theta. So, you know, if we can get an r cosine theta to pop up, bam, we can replace that with x. If we can get an r sine theta to pop up, bam, we can replace that with y. Now, a trick that you have to do sometimes is you have to multiply both sides of the equation by r. And we do that because we need to uh, establish this third relationship. I don't know why I put a bracket there. So I guess I'll just put a bar. Uh, at r, and that, uh, that third relationship is r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. Okay, um, so sometimes, you know, we get something that, you know, we cannot relate it to uh, our, you know, we can't get an R cosine theta or an R sine theta to pop up. Okay, we just can't. Like, we'll get like 1 over R, we'll get, you know, some crazy stuff like that. We'll get 1 over R or 1 over cosine. We just can't get R cosine theta and R sine theta. When you run into that issue, multiply both sides of the equation by R. That's going to make an R squared pop up, but it should give you the R cosine theta or the R sine theta you need. And then you can replace R cosine with X or replace R sine with Y. Okay, so you will force that to happen by multiplying by an R. Now, only do that if it was absolutely necessary or you're going to make something that's really ugly. And this first one, it is not necessary. So let's check that at in action. So that's going to be R is equal to 3. And remember, secant is 1 over cosine theta. And the reason why this is not necessary is because now I can just multiply by cosine theta on both sides. Okay, and I end up with cosine theta times r, or r cosine theta being equal to 3. And you remember, r cosine theta is x, so I can replace this with x right here. And you get x is equal to 3. So that is the conversion here. For r equals 3 secant theta, you can convert that to the polar or to the rectangular um, uh, coordinate formula x equals 3. So the polar coordinate formula r equals 3 secant theta is equal to the rectangular uh, coordinate formula x equals 3. Okay, here, there's no way to get just r cosine theta. You can get one fourth equals one over r cosine theta, but one over co r cosine theta is nothing. Here, if I bring the cosine theta over by division, I get r secant theta equals four. r secant theta isn't anything I could directly convert to. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's actually a formula somebody has out there, but you know that's one more thing to memorize. That's not what we're looking for. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, here, in order to get because look, we have a cosine, right? So obviously we're going to be going for the r cosine theta relationship. In order to get an r cosine theta to show up, we are literally going to multiply both sides by r. Sound like that dude from Parks and Rec. So if I multiply both sides by r here, I get r squared is equal to 4r cosine theta. Now there is the r cosine theta. I can actually replace this with x right now. Okay. So I have r squared is equal to 4x. Now, where do I go from here? Well, that's where I use this relationship right there. Okay. Okay, recall r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So I'm going to replace this r squared with this 4x. And then I will have something with all x's and y's. So I have 4x is equal to x squared plus y squared. And wouldn't it be nice if you could just stop there? This is technically in a rectangular coordinates. It's no longer in polar coordinates. But what in the heck is this? Like, what type of graph is that? Well, we get to do some, di uh, not difference of squares, 
um, completing of the squares, you know, completion of the squares, complete the squaring. You guys love doing that. So um, basically get it equal to zero. This is going to be zero equals x squared um, minus four x plus y squared, right? That's what I get when I um, go ahead and subtract four x from both sides. And now I can complete the square on this part right here. Here, b over two would be equal to negative four over two and b over two squared, which would be negative two squared, is gonna be a positive four. So if I add a positive four to both sides, I get this equation. Now notice I spaced over the y squared there, and that's because I wanted to focus on this. This is a perfect square binomial, okay? I did this so that way I can factor it, and I get four is equal to x minus two squared plus y squared. And that is an equation of a circle, okay? An equation of a circle with a radius of two, right? Because remember, that's supposed to be r squared right there. So if I square root that, I get two. And the center is positive two, comma, zero, okay? And that's because the generic formula for a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared being equal to r squared. Okay, so my r squared there would be four, which gives me radius two. I'm not subtracting anything from the y, so the center for the y would be zero. I am subtracting two from the x, so that would give me a positive two for the center of the circle. So that's what that ended up being. It's an equation of a circle, all right? So our old friend uh, completing the square is coming back to haunt us. So those of you who took advanced topics last year, you guys did a lot of conic sections or should have. Um, so hopefully, you know, that whole shindig I did right here is starting to bring back some nightmares from that. Uh, if you didn't do that in advanced topics or you skipped advanced topics, um, that's a very common thing to do uh, to get the formula for an ellipse or a circle or a hyperbola to show up you force the completion of squares to happen. Um, you'll see it happen again in just a moment here. Okay. Well, actually the opposite. Okay, let's, let's go ahead and move on here. Okay. All right, last page here. We want to convert these rectangular equations into polar equations. Be helpful if I got that on cam, right? And yeah, there we go. All right. So uh, recall that y is equal to r sine theta and x is equal to r cosine theta. Basically, I just throw this into the formula. Okay, just, just replace y with r sine theta, replace x with r cosine theta, and try to make something happen. Now, unlike the last one where we were able to algebraically manipulate it into something nice, there's really not that much you're going to be able to do to these. You're going to hit dead ends pretty quickly. All right. So here, I'm just going to replace this y with r sine theta. So that's going to be r sine theta right on the left-hand side. I'm going to replace the x with r cosine theta. Okay, so that's what I end up with there. That's a plus 1. Okay. Uh, now, where do I go from here? Uh, well, normally, I want r by itself. Okay, that's the general strategy here. So it's like get everything on one side, get r on the other side. Um, you usually get your equations in terms of r. So having said that, I'm going to go ahead and subtract the... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and subtract the 3r cosine theta. Okay, I didn't, I didn't show the work there, but that's what would have ended up happening if you did that. Okay, and then I'm going to factor an r out. wanting to write the c and the o of cosine at the same time. Does anybody else do that? I do it all the time. Okay, the r is away from it. Now basically divide this junk away. So r is equal to 1 over sine theta minus 3 cosine theta. That's it. There's really nothing much to do there. Just leave it like that. That is it. Not pretty, but it works. This next one is going to be an awesome problem for you guys to do on your own when you get to them. Um, 
Uh, if you remember the shortcut formula for perfect square trinomials, which is a plus or minus b squared, remember that's equal to a squared, and it will always be a plus b squared. And then you have uh, plus or minus 2ab, depending on what you had, uh, you know, on the inside there. So for this one, following that formula, this is going to be x squared minus 6x plus 9. Okay. It's not, that's what's balling about knowing that formula. You don't actually have to do all that foiling and combining like terms. Uh, this one's going to be y squared minus 2, excuse me, minus 4y plus 4. Okay. Um, all right. Now, where do we go from here? Well, 9 and 4 make 13. So I have 13 on both sides of the equation. They're basically going to cancel, right? Because if I have 13 equals 13, you know, I can subtract 13 from both sides and they're gone and I get equal zero. So what I'm left with is x squared minus 6x plus y squared minus 4y. And that's going to be equal to zero. Now you're going to replace x with r cosine theta and y with r sine theta. And it's going to get ugly, but that's just the way it is. All right, so replacing that, this is going to be r cosine theta Ew, like some divot in the paper there won't let me right on there we go so that's gonna be our cosine theta squared minus six r cosine theta there we go i tried writing the c and the o together again that's going to be r sine theta squared minus four r sine theta equals zero now hopefully these two things right here are kind of sticking out at you um and you might be saying, hey, I'm probably going to be able to do something with the Pythagorean identity from that one section because we had a bunch of problems that were just like this, uh, actually. Um, at least that, just this part for those two pairings. Uh, and, and you're correct. This is r squared cosine squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta. And we still have the minus 6r cosine theta minus 4r sine theta. Okay. And we could factor out an r squared, and when we do that, we're left with cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, which is 1. So I end up with just r squared right there. So I have r squared minus 6r cosine theta minus 4r sine theta. And now you remember the theme for solving... Um, any of the trig stuff from the prior sections, like a couple sections ago in chapter five, where the name of the game was get a product equal to zero. Same thing here. We have three terms all sharing an R, so we can factor out an R and that will create a product. So I have R times R minus six cosine theta minus four sine theta. And now I could set those two factors equal to zero. So I get R equals zero for just the R. And I have r minus 6 cosine theta minus 4 sine theta equals 0. And remember, just like, so here's one equation, just r equals 0. Crazy. Now for this one, remember, it's just like the last one. Get r on one side, get everything on the other. So you would just add 6 cosine theta and 4 sine theta to the other side. And you would get r is equal to 6 cosine theta plus 4 sine theta. So that would be the other equation from that. So taking this circle with radius root 13 and center 3, 2, we can go ahead and, because uh, that's, that's what this is, right? That's exactly what this is, right? This is a circle, right? X minus H squared, Y minus K squared, R squared. So it's a, a radius R root 13 and center 3, comma 2. So that's what that actually is. That's, it's just a circle. Radius root 13, center 3, comma 2. That's what this equation should give me. Obviously, this one is not going to work because that says radius 0. So that's not actually going to create it. So we just kind of ignore it. But that's the, the real equation right there. That should be a circle with radius root 13 and uh, the center 3, 2. Now, would I ever be able to look at that and know that? Nope. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I would basically work backwards from this by trying to make that magical r cosine and r sine theta to start up, right? Because there's no way I can get r cosine theta and r sine theta here. I would start by multiplying this side by r and that side by r. 
and then I would literally be at this line right here, and then I would have to work backwards from here, and then here, and it, it just it would just be really really hard to be given this and work backwards. It's not something I'm going to ask you to do. Okay, so you don't have to worry about that. All right, <clears throat> last problem. Um, blah 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 blah. Tracking system. It seems really complicated, but it's not. Let's just go ahead and sketch these two radiuses here. Okay. So uh, 110 degrees is going to be 20 degrees past 90. So that's somewhere over here with distance 8. Okay. Um, and this one is going to be uh, radius 5 at 15 degrees. So that's right there. Okay. And then we're going to find the distance between the two planes. It says the two planes are the same altitude. Um, I, like if you sketch this out, they're not the same height off of the origin. So don't get that in your head. It's not... It's a matter of perspective, and that's not the perspective you're supposed to be having on this. Um, I haven't thought about what that should look like in terms of the same altitude. Just just don't worry about it. Anyway, so they want me to find this distance right here, x. And so if I kind of just take that triangle out, I get something that looks like this. And this is, looks like something from the end of Chapter 5, Law of Cosines. If I could figure out this angle there, then I can solve for that side there. Right? Because, remember, that side would be x squared is equal to uh, minus 2 that side and that side, which would be 8 times 5, times cosine of that angle. Uh, and this would be equal to 8 squared plus 5 squared. It, it's just the law of cosine. Literally. Literally. Like that guy says. Um, Okay, um, and that angle is pretty easy to get. It's just going to be 110 minus 15, uh, which gives you 95. Okay, so we do 110 minus 15, I get 95. So that alpha right there is going to be the 110 minus 15 degrees, which gives me 95 degrees. Okay, so that's just cosine of 95 degrees right there. I keep writing that off the paper. There we go. Okay, so again, it's just law of cosines. We have x squared is equal to 8 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times 8 times 5 times cosine of 95 degrees. And then, just like before, this is nothing but calculator work. Um, you could just throw that in your calculator and square root it all. Um, obviously, we would only take the positive one because negative sides don't make sense for this. And if you go ahead and throw that in your calculator, you'll find the distance between the two airplanes being approximately 9.8 miles. Okay, so uh, nothing much to that. Okay. All right, haven't seen all that. Um, that's the end of uh, 6.4. We're going to be doing, I think, 6.6 .6 next, and that is it for Chapter 6. So um, I will probably throw 6.6 .6 up on sometime over the weekend, um, and I'll give you two days to do it. So I'll have that due like Tuesday night, so you have all day Monday to do 6.6 and all day uh, Tuesday, and then just get it done Tuesday night. And then I'll throw a review up, and that review will be due Friday. So that looks, that's what next week is looking like for us. That'll take us uh, basically to the end of the month. Um, so you got one more section and a review due next week, um, and that'll be it for Chapter 6. And, uh, you know, then the end of the year is quickly approaching. Um, please stay on top of, uh, of the work in the meantime, okay? All right. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me in an email or remind, and we can hop on Zoom and, you know, do some stuff from the textbook. I got the textbook here, so we can just throw up questions and do those. All right. Stay safe and have a good weekend and rest of your week.